In our very first lesson on matter, we learned that one of the main ways of distinguishing between mixtures and pure substances was determining how to separate the components of each substance or how to break them down. And we said that all mixtures could be separated by physical means and that no pure substances could be separated by physical means. We broke it down further and said, we didn't get into detail, but that there are different methods of separating uh, heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. We also said that one form of pure substance, compounds, can be separated chemically through a chemical reaction, and that the other kind of pure substance, elements, uh, they can't even be separated by chemical means. If you're going to break down an element or an atom, you have to do it with a nuclear reaction. Well, we're not getting in the, into the nuclear right now. We're going to focus on just the physical versus chemical changes and how we know when uh, one or the other is happening. So you think about this, the statement matter is always changing, ice in your drink melts, wood in your fire burns, and uh, that statement says a lot. A physical change is the ice in your drink melting, and it's a change that does not alter the chemical properties or the chemical composition within a substance. When you cut something, smash it, rip it, tear it, melt it, boil it, Okay, one of the tricks uh, that I like to focus on with in determining whether a phase change is chemical or physical is to say a p -f 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 phase, pH, phase change is a pH physical change. So a p -f phase change is p -f physical. So think of those P words. Paphase and paphysical. All phase changes are physical changes. When the ice melts, that's phase change, going from solid to liquid. When water boils, that's a phase change, going from liquid to gas. Condensation, going back from gas to liquid, and then freezing, uh, going from a solid, or liquid to a solid. People make the mistake, it's a very, very common mistake, of saying something is a physical change and we know it because you can go back. It can be reversed. Well, there's a lot of chemical processes that can also be reversed. By definition, this is a major statement. It's something that not only is it going to be tested on the Regents' exam 100% positive, it's just a... a an incredibly important concept for understanding chemistry. If it's a physical change, it can be reversed physically. So the can be reversed is important, but physical processes can be reversed physically. Think about it. When you have uh, salt water, Kool-Aid, we talked about this in class, uh, you make iced tea. You started with a solid mix, sugar and everything else. You put it in water, liquid water, and it dissolved, and it became what we call an aqueous solution. We said, okay, is that dissolving? Gosh, it seems like bonds could be broken. So what's happening here? Is that dissolving chemical or physical? Well, the fact is, in order to determine whether it's chemical or physical, we have to think of if and how we could reverse the process. After you dissolve the iced tea mix or Kool-Aid mix in the liquid water, if you want to separate them, you have to boil the solution. You'll boil the water off and the solid will be left behind. Well, if the process is boiling, boiling's a phase change, and like we said before, a phase change is a physical change. So therefore, we now know the process of dissolving must be a physical process because we can reverse it by boiling, which we know is a physical process. So don't just say it can be reversed. Uh, in order to be physical, a physical change, it must be able to be reversed physically. That's the key. You have to include the physically. So ice melting to become liquid, 
it still it was solid H2O. It became liquid H2O. So the chemical composition didn't change at all. When we have a chemical change, now you're looking for words like reaction. And in this case, the chemical composition does change. Um, so when we burn methane, methane is CH4. So let's just say I'm not going to try to figure out a chemical formula for wood, but even just something like CH4, we burn it in oxygen. And what we end up with is CO2 plus H2O. We're not going to worry about balancing the equation. But what you can see here, I no longer have one carbon bonded to four hydrogens. I no longer have an oxygen bonded to another oxygen. That's what I have on this side. Those are my reactants. Well, on the product side, I have a different combination of elements. Those are different compounds. Now my carbon's bonded to the oxygens, and hydrogen's bonded to the oxygens. This means that a chemical change has occurred. A chemical reaction has taken place. Uh, the signs of a chemical reaction, there are three of them. They're in this box here, and these are huge. They're also going to be on 100% of all regents exams from now till the end of time. If you see a color change, and a color change is not yellow plus blue makes green. That's a blend. But if I have something colorless and I add drops, uh, and then after a couple minutes we'll do a reaction, all of a sudden the whole thing, I, I add drops of something clear. So I add colorless to colorless, and instantly it changes to blue. We'll do the clock reaction, you'll see that. That's a color change, and that indicates a chemical reaction. If you mix something... Uh, that's clear and yellow with something else that's clear or maybe even white and you get something dark red. Well, clear plus yellow or white plus yellow wouldn't normally give you red. That's not a blend. That would be a color change. Bubbling and fizzing means that a gas is being produced. That's generally an indicator. It doesn't mean everything that bubbles is a chemical reaction, but if you mix two things together and get bubbling and fizzing, chances are that you do have a chemical reaction going on. And then energy being produced or consumed, meaning you're not putting the energy in with an oven. You just mix two things, and it either draws energy in from the environment, from the surroundings, or it gives energy off. Those are three, the three main ways of uh, being able to tell or indicate when a chemical reaction has occurred. Changing of matter. Uh, and whether or not it's physical or chemical, these are just a few practice problems. Go ahead and take a shot at these, and we'll discuss the answers to those and any questions that you have on this material in class tomorrow.